Hey, it's Kevin DeWitt here, and welcome to another plugin knowledge session. In this session, we're going to continue on with the PSP Infinity Strip. Firstly, if you're new to my channel and new to my videos and you like what you see, please click the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell to be notified of all my future videos. All right, so. Let's now move on to another part. So we'll come over here where we're going to have two leads. We'll go for our same theory there. So again, let's go with our filter. that out a little bit. All right, let's copy that over to the other one. Now I haven't done any EQ yet because I want to have a listen to them. Let's see what it sounds like in the mix. Let's jump over to the next one. Again, another pair. So let's sort of shortcut. I'm going to shortcut these last ones a little bit by just taking over 
these ones here that have sort of been pre-done and we'll just adjust them to suit. And let's move on to our lucky last. Oh, this is just that affected one. bit off just to have a bit of a cut and low top uh, probably need a little bit of compression there it's gonna have to be fast Okay, so we've got the guitars in there. That's sounding pretty good. Now let's have a look at our pad. Okay, now we've got all these ones on effects. So if I was to put reverb on here or something like that, then I would tweak this as well for the reverb, but we haven't done any reverb. So let's just...
that's all I'm going to do with this one. Just a bit of drive, just add a little bit of grit to it and just filter out a little bit of that low end. I'm not going to do any in the mid section or the top for this one. It's a pad that's pretty much clean as it is. Let's just see how it fits in. Uh, can't do that there. Let's bring those two in. Let me just mute that violin. Okay, so let's have a look at our violin. So I'm sort of going a little bit faster now. Just, I guess, speeding through it a little bit. We'll go with a pre-60s on this one just to, I don't know, just to add a different sort of vibe to this one. Say it in the mix. Okay, I'm gonna. Push it over to the left a bit. But what I'm also going to do is go out of the norm here a little bit. And we'll call it to. And what we might do is we just all right. So I've just transposed it down uh, an octave. And what I want to do is go the opposite side.
know what we could do is we could just go through again and just do some gain staging again. Let's just save that where it is. All right, so start with our drum bus. Let's just check this one here. Okay, we'll just get them all right and then we'll compare these VCAs to our buses. Okay, so for gain staging into our buses, this is what I've had to do. So in theory, if I want to get my mix back to the way it was, then we need to add this volume to our buses. So we should increase that by about four. Give or take. And the base should be by 1.4. So we're almost getting back up to zero. Four, let's, uh, give or take that. We'll do an, a little extra tweak anyway to our mix just to make sure it's nice and balanced. Yeah, about 2.5. Okay, 7, 6. Point. Somewhere there, 7.4, 5, so 7, that's 4, 5, six. Okay, so we're going to combine 
Turn the root off. Combine. Combine. Right. Okay. Now. Okay, I have two other VCAs here, which is bus VCA and all VCA. Now, all VCA would be to adjust all of these VCAs. So if we want to drop the level coming into all our buses, we could do that. Our bus VCA drops all our levels of our buses. So where we determine that is on our mix bus here. If we are doing this for mixing alone, and we're not not mastering at this stage, we might want to still look at going to our minus 18. So in that case here, I might grab this. Okay, and drop it down. Now we're sitting roughly minus 18. What's that done is that's pulled all of these bus faders down. So then we could consolidate that. I could actually put that main fader back up. Now, the other thing you could do is you could go, okay, but now that we've done all that, I want to just do another little tweak here. I want to just, you know, check out the balance between my various bus tracks here. Make sure they're sitting fairly nicely, right? So we'll just start as our drums as a starting point. Okay, and then lastly, what you might want to look at is on the mix bus itself, you might want to add a little bit of polish on the end here. So you might decide to say, okay, well, I've got a little bit of a compressor here. I'm going to put some sort of EQ here, okay? Now, it could be that you want to boost the bass a bit or something. you might want to add some sort of sparkle up the top.
Okay, and then of course, if you really wanted to get your levels up, you could do that with a limiter on the main bus there. So we could say, all right, I want to get it up. Uh, I'll just drop this down just for this video's point of view so we can hear. I might say, well, I want to get it up to minus one or roughly close enough to it. All right, so I want to do that. I want the attack. Uh, I don't want it too quick. Quick release, similar to what I'm going to do with the compressor here. Okay, but you can see there's no gain reduction here. So with this one here, normally you would say drop the ceiling to get the limiting, but if we want to actually want to use it like a mastering tool and set it to a ceiling value, then what we need to do is we need to actually get the audio up to do this. Now, we could do it with multiple ways. We could use the master control. I could use the gain control here on this EQ. See if it goes loud enough to do it. Okay, so on, I'm just going to set this meter to pre just to show you because otherwise I'd have to boost this up and it might blow our ears out. Now, interestingly enough, it's actually going to which is very interesting because that says to me that, uh, the, yeah, the compressor is going over. Let's look at the settings when you go almost brick wall. So they go very fast attack, very fast release pretty much. Uh, then you wanna set this back. Okay, now we are really crunching it. So it's probably because I was a bit too slow on the attack. Yeah, you can see here our peaks here are sitting just below the zero, so we're sort of hitting there. We're just, just getting into the limiter a little bit, not too much. Now that's with the meters on pre, obviously if I'm on post, it's a lot lower because I've got the fader down. So that would sort of balance not balance, sorry, that would sort of master it in a way. It's not the best tool for mastering, but you get away with it. Now, in theory here, I have a brick wall limiter here. So let's reset to this brick wall limiter. And this one here is set to minus one and it literally is called a brick wall limiter. So let me just turn this fader down. And then what we'll do is I'll actually put that back to zero, right? So now we are sending it through minus one and let's see what happens here. <laughs> Okay, it's not, it's 
going over a little bit. 0.5. So there is some inter-sample peaks happening with this uh, limiter here. I'm not sure. I mean, the opto limiter I would think would be worse. Yeah, it's in the red. Okay, so that's at the mastering level there. And now let's have a listen. Again, as I said, it's not a perfect mix. Okay, I'd spend a lot more time on this. I would do comparisons out in the car, in other rooms, obviously with my studio monitors instead of headphones. We'd add some reverb and other effects and things like that that we haven't quite done. But uh, let's bypass it all okay what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take this uh, VCA out I'm going to set that game back to zero that's at zero that way I can bypass without having a massive volume increase Hopefully. Okay, there is a volume increase, but let's just find a spot. We'll jump around in a few spots just to do a bit of a comparison here. So a bit of a before and after. So before. Okay, so hopefully that gives you a good example. Let's bring this limiter back in again. Still, I can't remember what I had that set to. I'll set it to about there. Alright, so, and the last check here is that when we originally started, we had all the modules on, but uh, they were turned off, basically, and we just had a couple of modules on, and we were sitting at 10% CPU and 40% memory. Then, uh, turned them all on, we ended up at 18% and about 43 now 
obviously we've got to factor in different day, different thing on the computer, that sort of stuff. Okay, but now with all of this loaded on, we're sitting about 25%. And if we actually play... About 30%. And the memory hasn't really changed. So in my system here for this song, this is very efficient, okay? This is not, um, it's not uh, running badly. And let's even have a look. And my buffer size on my audio interface is even down at 256. I haven't even had to increase the buffer size. So this is not a massively huge project with, you know, hundreds of tracks, but uh, it's done pretty well to load up all of these uh, channel strips on all these tracks and run without a, any trouble whatsoever, no glitching, it starts instantly, it doesn't hesitate, you can see the actual load here, pretty low. As I said, I have a very powerful system, granted, but it's still very good compared to some other plugins out there. All right, so there you go. There is a practical use of the PSP Infini Strip. Hopefully we got some good results out of that. And, uh, you know, let me know what you think of the plugin uh, in the comments below. Let me know what you think of how I used it and what you might have suggested I could have done better or anything like that. Happy to help uh, listen to that. Uh, obviously this is not a full mix end to end but it is sort of a rough example of how i would use the plugin and what sort of results you may get from it if you do have any questions please feel free to put them in the comments below i'll try to help wherever i can and again if you want to see any improvements to this plugin or additions please let me know because i'm really curious to uh, have a conversation about that and see what people's ideas are for this plugin suite if you did like the video please click the thumbs up subscribe to the channel Click the notification bell to be notified of all my future videos. Hopefully the video has been helpful. I thank you for watching and I will catch you in the next one.